Hi, I'm Azuz, and this is a bit of an unorthodox video. I'm going to focus on an area of trade-ups that I don't normally go into, and this is the really high-risk, high-reward trade-ups, baller trade-ups, as I'm going to call them. Basically, a type of gambling where you can be smart about things. Speaking of gambling, though, I'm going to be giving away five minimal wear or bread lines. Check the link in the description below to enter. Otherwise, though, I should continue on. So, I do some high-risk trade-ups from time to time. Sometimes they go well, sometimes they don't. But I don't do anything really that's too out there. I never risk complete disaster. And the thing is, high-risk trade-ups are a pretty popular type of video content. I mean, let's be real, I'm kind of missing out on an opportunity here. So, I figured since I don't have the guts to do it myself, I could at least put out a guide to help anyone who wants to try and rack up some YouTube views for themselves do this sort of stuff. I'll begin with a couple of case studies. First up, this is James. James likes to gamble from time to time, you may have heard about that. And James is here doing a Dragon Law trade up. Let's watch. So, as you can tell from that totally not overactive response, it didn't go too well for poor James, and it really does raise a question. Not the question about why he can afford to throw away $1,000 on a trade-up, but only afford a $20 mic, but the question of, was he going about being a trade-up baller the right way? Before I answer that question, let's look at another video. This one's from a smaller channel, they seem to mostly make gaming content, and they're doing a trade-up for a Orc Medusa with just one Poseidon in the trade-up. <laughs> now, one of these two videos is setting a really awful example for children. It's teaching them all the wrong ways to go about being a gambler, and I hate calling people out, but on screen, has it really failed to reach the standards that have arbitrarily decided I'm going to both set and impose? Before I explain why I think this video sets such a bad example for the children though, I think first of all we need to take a step back and work out what we're trying to achieve here. What are baller trade-ups? What are we trying to achieve with them? Well, baller trade-ups have two very simple components. First of all, there needs to be a chance of getting a valuable skin. This can be scalable, maybe it's a Dragon Law, maybe it's Poseidon, maybe it's an m 4 s Hot Rod, maybe it's an Emerald Dragon. The important thing is, at the end of the day, that it's something that's seen as particularly valuable by your viewers. Secondly, there needs to be a risk of getting absolutely destroyed in the trade-up, so your viewers can potentially enjoy the spectacle of you being absolutely devastated on screen. What's the purpose of doing this? Well. As I've alluded to, the purpose of these trade-ups is entertainment. Not for you, you'll probably find it terrifying, but for your viewers, because watching this shit is fun. And I'm not being sarcastic here either, it is pretty fun to watch, the viewing figures speak for themselves. But here's where it's important not to be confused. Just because you're a baller, doesn't mean that you can't make a profit. The odds don't have to be rigged against you. And I'm going to explain to you how you can make this stuff be as much in your favour as possible. So, first and foremost, what skins are we going to be trading up for? I mean, that's the first step, obviously, and there's an element of art and an element of science to this, because we don't just want valuable skins, we want skins that are popular, that are perceived as being desirable, that look nice. So, obviously things like the Dragon Law, the Fire Serpent, the Medusa, they're, they're ideal, they're the cream of the crop, but look, we don't necessarily need to go that high either. You could do an m 4 a s Hot Rod. You could do an m 4 a s Masterpiece. You could do the Empress. You could do the Chantico's Fire. They might not get you the same number of views, but they'll still do the job. In fact, if you've got a bit less money to spend on these types of trade-ups, these cheaper skins are actually even better because it's generally easier to make money on them. So, once you know what you're going to be trying to get, we need to work out how we're going to construct our contract because, you see, for our baller trade-ups to be exciting, there needs to be a chance to lose a lot of money, but also a chance to win a lot, and we need to design the contract with this in mind. Now, this depends a bit on what win skins we're aiming on, and I'm going to divide up these into two categories based on their collection. We've got 
coin flip collections and pure collections. Now, technically these categories aren't mutually exclusive, but that sort of gets a little bit too complicated if I try and go down that path, so we'll leave that out for now. Basically, if you're trying to get a skin from a coin flip collection, there's a 50% chance of getting a good skin and a 50% chance of getting a piece of shit. Classic examples are things like the Spectrum 2 collection. The Empress is a pretty awesome skin, right? But for every Empress, you'll get to see you later. Similarly, the, the Revolver collection, the Royal Paladin is worth quite a lot, but if you want to get one, you have to accept that 50% of the time, you'll get a Revolver Fade instead. Now, this is handy because this will generally be incorporated into the price of the skins that you use for the trade up. So this whole thing about either winning big time or getting destroyed is taken care of for you. All you have to do is grab some minimal wares and a few factory news so that the float is balanced out and you're good to go. Most of the time, the trade up will already be profitable without you even having to do anything complicated with it. Pure collections are a little bit different though. Basically, there's no skins in the tier of the collection that you're aiming for that aren't wins. Examples of this are stuff like the Knight and Poseidon, the Medusa and the Dragon Law, the Hydroponic and the Org Akihabara. So as a result, it generally isn't possible just to grab 10 skins from these collections and trade them up for a profit. It definitely won't be a big profit anyway. And we want a big profit. So what we need to do is introduce skins from different collections into the trade up to get the price down. Now, Obviously, this means that the risk of the trade-up is going to be increased, but I mean, risk-reward, that's the compromise we're making, and it's what's, what's going to make the trade-up exciting for the viewers. But here's where there's a curveball that we need to keep in mind, because trade-up contracts don't work the way you'd intuitively think they do. You see, you'd assume the contract is simply going to pick a skin from one of the 10 slots and then pick a skin from that collection, but it doesn't. Instead, it takes what I like to call the lucky dip approach to working out what skin you get. Let's pretend we're trying to get a dragon law, for example. So I want to keep the price down, so I'm using five knights and five wasteland princesses, so I can get a dragon law, but I can also get a dragon fire or a buzz kill from the glove case. But what are the odds of that happening? Well, here's the thing. The odds of a glove case skin isn't 50%, it's actually 66%, because the game doesn't just select one of the 10 skins and give you a covert from that, that particular collection, it does something quite different. So each of these knights is putting a dragon law into the lucky dip bag, but each wasteland princess is putting a dragon fire and a buzzkill into the lucky dip. So there's 15 things we can pull out, but only five of them are dragon laws. Oops. Now there's a very simple solution though. You just make sure whichever skin you're using as filler has only one covert option. In fact, you can even flip it in your favor. Want to maximize your bang for your buck when trying to get a fire serpent? Use five ocean foams and five cold bloodeds. All of a sudden, you've got a 33% chance of a fire serpent rather than only a 25% chance. Now, I'm not really sure how long this has been known about. There was certainly a cabal of high-end traders who knew but were very clandestine about it. But from mid 2016 onwards, it became much more widely known, in part due to the efforts of a certain burrito. You see, this is what James got right, probably by accident, because he's using the FAMAS afterimage, and you can only get an M4A4 X-ray from the afterimage, so there's a 50-50 chance of getting a Dragon Law. But on screen, like, god damn it, man, you've got no idea what you're doing. There's basically only a 5% chance of getting a Medusa here. I mean, sure you got it, but you've got no idea how much of a risk you took. I mean, think of the children. Wait. What was that? Oh, okay, I guess he did know about it and even stated it up front. I guess I'll have to withdraw my criticism then. This guy did his due diligence. I mean, sure, some people told him he was wrong in the comments, but multiple people actually came out and correctly stated the way the odds work. And sure, multiple other people called them retarded for it, but still, it was there. That's interesting though. Why? When was this video released? What? It's from October 2015. What was I saying a moment before? There was certainly a cabal of high-end traders who knew but were very clandestine about it, but from mid-2016 onwards, it became much more widely known. So, maybe it wasn't so much a case of a secret cabal as an 
open secret that just wasn't picked up on for some reason. Well, that's a lot there, sexy. So much for my conspiracy theory. Anyway, I know I've been presenting this video as if it's some sort of self-help guide for YouTubers who are doing high-end stuff, but let's be real, I don't think any of them are likely to be watching, and they probably don't need my advice anyway. In fact, it's almost like the person who's watching this who'd benefit the most is me. Really ironic, right? Thinking about it though, I, I like some of these coin flip trade-ups, they look like a lot of fun to do. It gives me an idea for a new series in the future. Either way though, what I really wanted to nail home with this video is this whole spiel about how trade-ups select the skin they give you because it's a bit like fire. If you don't know what you're doing with it, it can burn you, but if you can control it, as Thorin might say, it'll bring in the Skrilla. And I know this was a slightly abstract way of getting that point across, but yeah, I don't really have an explanation, sorry. Anyway though, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm planning on doing some more spare change trade-ups and some more sticker scrapings next. Also, don't forget to enter the giveaway. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your gut. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.